leave for school? Have you cleaned your teeth? Yeah. Yeah? You've got everything ready for school? Yeah. Very clean. I just need to put my phone down. Yes! Three, two, three, two. Did you have a nice weekend, Harder? Yeah, I did. I was asking. Mary Hare School in Berkshire is a residential special school for severely and profoundly deaf children from across the UK. Okay guys, are you ready? We're going to walk over to school now, okay? The emphasis here is on developing speaking and listening skills so that pupils can access a full mainstream curriculum. But this comes with a particular set of challenges. For the majority of deaf children, the, the impact of deafness is on their language. They have a language delay typically and lots of, lots of children here have quite a severe language delay and that impacts on their reading age, on their vocabulary, on their ability to express themselves. We have a group of children we've identified that have got language delay that goes beyond what we might usually meet just due to the deafness. So five years ago, as part of our new specialist school status, we developed a programme whereby those groups would have a specialist teaching assistant working with them with the specific aim of supporting their language development. With the introduction of these language enrichment groups, or LEGS, across the school, the role of teaching assistants has grown significantly, particularly in relation to the school's literacy strategies. This film looks at the contribution of three TAs. Liesl Britton, who works with the Year 10s. OK, you've got a friendly ghost. Can you find me a friendly ghost? Leslie White, who specialises in learning difficulties. The idea is that you put this in your own words. Mm. Do you understand what you have to do now? And former pupil Sophie Gilmore. Well, I think I can empathize with them. Because being a nice pupil of this girl, I've been through it and I know what it's like. Liesl has been with this leg group since they started in Year 7. Now in the first year of GCSE, she's helping them to overcome the additional language demands of English poetry. Georgina, is that big enough for you to read? Yeah. Yeah. Are there any words there you don't understand? Um, uh, um, not big. Yeah, that one. That one? Yeah. Corpses. It's a cut sound. Do you know what a corpse is, Martha? Sure. You're not sure. Does anybody know? Christine! Christine, oh, at last. Corpus, it is, means like dead bodies. Well done. There's so many words that they don't understand that you or I would just take for granted, I think. And um, it's just actually reinforcing and checking and saying to them, right, read this piece. OK, tell me what it means. In class, Liesl takes an active role in finding ways to make language more accessible, introducing new strategies to pupils and teachers. We're looking for alternative ways to, to develop teachers in terms of their use of new teaching techniques, um, new technology. And we came up with the idea of using the TAs as a vehicle for delivering that CPD in the classroom in the normal run of their day. And how that works is that a TA who might be working with a specific child or a group would be trained in a particular use of a, a technique or some, some intervention. I'm going to get one of you to come up and see if you can put a picture that, having read the bit at the top, what picture have you got in your mind and is there a picture that's the closest that you would put in there? It is a challenge to deal with the poems that we have that are very abstract very often. So what we've been oh, seeing no. today is that oh, Lisa can is... make it come to life and they do actually get pictures in their mind, not just words. Because they can learn a stream of vocabulary, but uh, at the end of it, you know, they don't actually understand the whole poem. The storyboard is just for them really, to help you see their visual perception of language so that we can see what their understanding of the language is. So that we can then, then break down what they're not understanding. Liesl's very strong on the uh, modern technology and I, I have been relying on her for that and she, she did all the background work to sort out the images and things. Uh, I'm stronger on sort of abstract language and she, she really brings it to life. It's not going to lie flat, it's going to kind of float. Whoa. We're a little bit worried that some of these highly qualified teacher of the deaf might not take too kindly to, to us thinking that they needed to be trained by somebody with a 
a different professional status. But in fact, it's, there's, there's been nothing like that. And teachers are much more likely to come and talk to us about how much they value the, their TA and how it's been a benefit to their own teaching. Hi, Thomas. Uh, how are you? No, no. Good. No. I'm fine, thanks. Good. As a legs TA, Liesl also supports individual pupils outside the classroom in speech and language therapy sessions. In the beginning, I didn't work with the teaching assistants at all. Um, so speech therapy was really separate from school and no one really knew about us either. And it was really hard to monitor the children's progress. Thomas, Liesl tells me you've been practicing your k speech sound. Yeah. Have you? Yeah. Excellent. How do you say that? K Lovely. Because of the language enrichment group, because I'm also involved in it, started working with the teaching assistants. And it was just a great opportunity. Are you happy with yeah, that? Much better. Yeah. Much better. I mean, you always think you're an expert in your field, but they are actually experts with the children in the classroom and in different environments. So it's great to have that feedback. Okay, have a look here. Tourism. <laughs> That's it, lovely. She knows Thomas really well, and so I might have written a word out for him to say how I think it should be, um, which is the correct way, but she knows that he finds it easy in a different way, and she'll say, oh, this might help, and she'll change it, and he'll get it straight away. And that's the whole point of her being in the session. This is also geography, because this is your teacher in geography, isn't it? Yeah? What's he called? Ask you. Ask you. Beautiful. <laughs> okay, good afternoon. Can you all hear me? Yeah. yeah. In Robin Askew's Year 9 geography class, mm -hmm. dyslexia specialist Leslie White is an example of how TAs at the school are taking on new responsibilities to support the needs of pupils and teachers. Pyroclastic explosions when the hot ash and gas goes up into the air and it moves very, very quickly. Same thing like explosion, but more dangerous. Like an explosion, but more dangerous? Ahmad's right. It's very, very dangerous, the hot ash and gas. And Leslie's put up on the board for you there. Teachers are having to become very much more expert at delivering the curriculum to a lot of what would be very specialist difficulties, all who happen to have hearing impairment as the common theme. When the, it erupts, it doesn't erupt anymore, but it might erupt sometime in the future. That sounds much better. Well done. Thank you, Adam. Well, Adam is extremely articulate and he listens very, very well. And usually he reads very fluently. He has a very high reading age. His problem comes when he has to record his own thoughts. My role is to make that more possible and we use different techniques depending on the task. Michael, I think it would be better if you just, just do this as headings. Michael's need is more global. His reading isn't as fluent. He doesn't derive as much meaning. His language is less developed. Both boys, although they're deaf, they have a specific learning difficulty that is as difficult for them as the deafness. And our true bow was taken by the speech shuttle. There is another boy in Mark who has a brain stem implant. He was completely hearing till 12. He can discriminate between sound and silence. For him, I would support in trying to make sure he is following the verbal part of the lesson without intruding on the rest of the group and making sure he, he can take opportunities to answer questions and to show his knowledge and feel good about himself. The dark pink area through the lahars. Lahars. What were lahars? Uh, mudslides. Mudslides, fantastic. Thank you. Because of the dyslexia training and, and the HLTA status, it's given me an opportunity to work more closely with teachers and look at teaching methods and techniques that would will work with a dyslexic and would benefit a hearing impaired student because they are very closely allied. Looking at the word mat in front of you, who could tell me the words that we were looking at last week? I was well aware of what I wanted on the word mats from a geographical perspective and ensuring that terminology was put onto the front page. And where Leslie was able to give me advice was 
on the reverse of the sheet to ensure that the adjectives, the connectives, was very much a cross-curricular approach and was in line with what the pupils would be learning in other subjects, and particularly within the English language. It's helpful for the dyslexics because they don't have to look up and down and copy off the board, it's there on the table. For other students, we can focus language a little more directly and specifically. It's in its infancy and we're, we're looking to develop that. And obviously, because I move between classrooms and I can access other teachers and get input as to what other curriculum requirements are appropriate at Year 9 or Year 7, so it can be adapted to need. I think one of the successes of Leslie and I working together is that we both respect each other's specialist knowledge that we're bringing to the relationship and that whereas in some places I feel that teachers see themselves as being above the teaching assistants, here we're working very collaboratively. Sophie Gilmore is Mary Hare's newest TA. During lessons and after school prep she supports Legs Plus, a group of year eight pupils with severe language delay and is uniquely placed to help, being hearing impaired herself. Sometimes they became when um, I cannot understand them when the tears current because I'm able to repair them and I pray that to them. Okay. She obviously has a huge insight into language issues because she has had them herself. So when she's working with Sarah, I think she has interesting and, and novel ways of overcoming particular vocabulary issues that might not have occurred to somebody who's been hearing all their life. I couldn't really do without Sophie. She's such a good role model to all the children, uh, not only in my class here, but also around the school. She understands their needs and they look on her as someone that they can actually talk to as well. Um, I have my role as the teacher, but she's also there to help them and she's with them in all the lessons uh, and in prep time. So she knows what's gone on in all the lessons and when it comes to prep, she's their extra help. Sometimes when they've been in a thousand, their prep, their language in the prep may not have been modified for them to be with them and tell them through the questions in a way that they will understand what they're being asked to do. Do you remember when, um, where they went to school, what kind of place they went to school at? When I was there, there were no tears at all. It's only something that happened in the last few years. I don't have to say, I think, there were some children who were school with me who could have been done with having a tear in the classroom. But from my personal point of view, it would have been really nice to have had more time. I thought of role models when I was at university. I used to think about trying not to be a teacher, but the time I was invited. So I went to work and school. But for the last few years, I feel I thought about it a bit more, but I'm not quite sure if I were to do the training yet to be a teacher. To my the picture, the picture we were would be coming home every day, feeling trapped in the spectrum, that they feel I helped them people.